Hello, and welcome to the Underpaid Gamers Podcast. My name is Tony. I am with my friend and colleague, Justin. Hey, what's up? There he is. Welcome. Today, we have a lot of news for you, uh, but mostly we're going to be talking about the Rogue One trailer, number two, but and then Westworld, the new HBO series, which is awesome. But no. Before that, we have some news. Uh, we're going to talk about some new Marvel news, some new video game news, uh, and some things for systems in general, PS4, Xbox One, and the like. So welcome, let's get into it. That was our theme song. As per usual in underpaid Mm -hmm. gamers fashion, we mentioned the theme song and how it was made by you. It was, a long time ago. Over a year ago, it was made by me. That's true. Man, we've been doing this for a while. We've been doing this for a year. Yep. Anyway, welcome. Underpaid Gamers is the official podcast of underpaidgamers.com. Dark you can time. find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play. We're on Twitter at UP Gamers Podcast, and you can email us at underpaidgamerspodcast at gmail.com. That's it. I think you got it all. That was really, really nice. I have not practiced. Nice and concise. Thanks. Proud of you. Let's do some news. All right. Yeah? Let's jump into it. Okay. Uh, so, first of all, there's a new uh, poster, building sized poster of the new Wolverine movie. With a good old Hubert Jackman. Hugh Jackman. (laughs) Hubert. Uh, Just simply titled Logan. Have you seen it? It's him and his old hand holding, uh, well, his blazer out, holding a little girl's hand. Yeah. I have seen it. Okay. Uh, So it's released in March 3rd of 2017. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. From what I understand, this is him, like, old. Yeah, it's supposed to be... Like Old Man Logan, the based nah, off, like, nah, nah. J- loosely based off of Old Man Logan. See, I don't know anymore because people are saying that the girl is X twenty three, which is like so. At the end of X Men Apocalypse, mm-hmm. there was that bad guy that got his DNA because he was locked in the testing facility. Remember? Okay. Um, maybe you don't remember. Was I don't in- remember that. Part. It was the in credit scene. Okay. So oh, okay, yeah. And now there are people who be like, oh well, they're gonna make X twenty three because that's her origin story. Mm-hmm. And now they think that the girl's X twenty three, and maybe he'll train her, do whatever. I don't know. Yeah. But the argument against Old Man Logan is that Fox, who owns Wolverine and X Men, does not own any other character in Old Man Logan. Oh. The major characters in Old Man Logan. Well. Red Skull. Yeah. Uh, the Hulk. Mm. Um, Venom is there. Actually, it's a symbiote. It's not actually Venom, but it takes over a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Mm. Nice. So it's awesome. That, that Wolverine, is a lot of fun. Wolverine rides on it, I believe. <laughs> nice. um, Hawkeye. Mm. An old Hawkeye is there. Yeah, there's no way this is, movie's happening. Uh, all, like, all the X-Men are there, but yeah. they... Uh, spoiler alert mm-hmm. for a little bit. Ba-da-da. Actually, probably one of the best scenes of the whole comic. Mm. Wolverine kills them all. Oh my gosh! Um, because someone gets into his mind and convinces him that there's a whole bunch of, like, Spider-Man villains. So he's, like, fighting, like, oh, it's Mysterio. Mysterio's there. Mysterio, my favorite Spider-Man villain. <laughs> One of my favorites. Convinces him that instead of fighting the X-Men, he is actually fighting a whole bunch of other vill- villains. Mm-hmm. And then when Mysterio, like, stops mysticizing him, yep. uh, Wolverine's like, oh, no, what have I done? Type thing. Mm, gotcha. So I doubt we'll see Old Man Logan. There, uh, one of the other podcasts I listened to, uh, what is it called? The Weekly Planet, Weekly Planet says yeah. that instead of Old Man Logan with Wolverine, they should just do it with Captain America. Because hmm. literally, Sony owns the rights to every single character. Not Sony. Fox, Marvel, Marvel and Disney Marvel, own Disney. all the rights yes. to every character in that. Mm-hmm. Um, except for Wolverine and obviously the X-Men. Mm-hmm. Um, and they can just replace Wolverine with Captain America and it'll be sick. But the whole storyline? Yeah. What do you mean? I mean, they just put well, Captain America in there and say that role. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they could do that. So Also, Captain America's shield plays a big part. He, uh, uh, Wolverine, another spoiler, mm-hmm. kills the Red Skull with Captain America's shield. Nice. Like, So you know in uh, nice. the end of Civil War, mm-hmm. the movie, mm-hmm. when Captain America is on top of Tony Stark and he's bashing him with his shield. And I thought he was going to kill end, him. He's going to chop his head off. Yeah. Wolverine does that to Red Skull. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's awesome. So that's fun. So anyway, this new movie's coming out. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if... Fox did a version of it and just take out all those characters and put in random things in their place. So eventually, essentially make like a terrible movie of X-Men, Wolverine, um, Logan, Old Man. One of the big that's different reasons the of Old Man Logan is the U.S. is like separated into five or six different zones. Okay. Um, and these are like huge zones, like north to south. It's almost like time mm-hmm. zones, but there's more of them. Yeah. And each zone is ruled by a crime family, essentially. It's a whole U.S. 
Really? So, like, the Hulklings have, like, the Nevada, I believe, the Nevada desert area. Mm-hmm. It's, like, Hulk's family. And for some reason, they're, like, backwater country... Hillbilly Hillbillies Hulks, Hulks <laughs> um, which is super weird. It is a little uh, weird. Wolverine's family gets killed. Oh. Um, I think Doctor Doom has a whole segment. Red Skull has a whole segment. I think that's by the Washington, D.C. Yeah. So it's, it's a trek from uh, one side of the country to the other side. Also... Uh, Hawkeye is with him the whole time, for the most part. Okay. Um, and they drive, instead of, like, walking and hoofing it, yeah, they, they drive. drive the whole time, and it's this Spider-Man Jeep, <laughs> which can, like, has Spider-Man's power, so they can, like, go up walls and things. Oh, that's cool. Which is cool, and I'm always like, why does Spider-Man need a Jeep? I guess this is why. Anyway, it's for a really his, good comic. For his friends to hang out with. Yeah, him. dude. It's a good comic, but... But, again, I there, there are limitations a, it from be a going from movie. a comic book to a movie, and one of those things is... The Spider-Man Jeep. I don't think they could really yeah, do Yeah, just the that one thing, the that Spider-Man thing Jeep. A little bit too much. Also, Hillbilly Hulks might be not very screen-friendly. Re- I mean, they could replace it with the thing, yeah. right? Because they're really not that different. Yeah. But I don't know how... Because, uh, like, I believe She-Hulk and the Hulk... I don't I don't think they have kids, but that one's the, that's the only thing that makes sense to me is that they would have kids. Yeah. And then they inbred from there. Ugh. Hundreds and hundreds of years. Anyway. Yeah, let's move on. That's what we've been <laughs> Big news. Dun, dun, dun. Let's talk about Iron Fist first. Okay. Uh, it's set to release on March 17, 2017. Mm-hmm. New York Comic Con, NYCC, mm-hmm. just recently finished. Okay. Um, and there were some new releases of Iron Fist trailers and teaser trailers there. I did see one of those trailers. I saw a few of them, and I felt like that's the first Iron Fist trailer I saw. And it was mine, too. That's actually. what I thought. And then I did some research, and people were like, these have been coming out for a long time. And I didn't know. There's it's, no way I missed them. Like, last week was the first time I've seen one. I guess I missed them. I guess you missed them, too. So I don't know we, what's going on. We both missed them. But they look good. I'm excited to uh, excited to see it. Yeah, um, they will obviously go into the defenders, which I think will come around come out in September of 2017. Mm-hmm. It's like six months, March oh, to September, and then yeah. obviously back again. So we'll see what happens there. Danny Rand will be fun. Mm-hmm. Good old uh, karate, see, as SpongeBob says. I don't know anything about the Iron, Iron Fist. Fist besides the trailer that I watched, and I know that he's on the defenders. And I know that it's a Netflix show that's coming out. That's all I know. You want to know about, like, the character? You don't know? I just, like, yeah, like, he's different. You want me to give you a quick synopsis? Yeah, tell me about his character, his personality. Um, well, he... This is a hard... Hard um, question. I don't necessarily know about his personality so much as I know about other people's, but okay. I can tell you a little bit about his origin. Okay. He, uh... So his... He's... His family owns Rand Industries. Danny Rand. Okay. Rand is the last name. Um, so it's his mom, his dad own this company. It's mm-hmm. a big old company. Mm-hmm. Think of it kind of like uh, Wayne. Wayne Enterprises. Wayne Enterprises. Okay. Not, I mean, and Stark Enterprises, things like that. Yeah. Um, so it's a big big thing in New York, um, obviously because all these take place in the neighborhoods of New York. Yeah. Um, so there is the, uh, his dad's like best friend and business partner. Think Obadiah Stane from Iron... Okay, so he's Iron sketchy. Man. Yeah, he's sketchy. Um, they go, I guess they're real into fitness. They go and uh, are hiking in the Himalayas, mm. or like mountain climbing in the Himalayas, mm-hmm. and uh, his best dad's best friend, don't know his name, um, kind of betrayed him, kills his father, like... Has like a Mufasa moment, like Uncle Scar. Yeah, very similar. Oh my god. Um, to where like, he just like cuts his rope, I believe, and then he dies. <laughs> and then the mother is there, and the mother like runs away and gets eaten by wolves. Oh. And then Danny, Danny's there as a young Danny, he's like... Let's say 10 years old. Okay. I don't know yet. Um, and then instead of, like, him getting killed, he gets teleported to another region. It's, like, a region of, like, magic and monks and, like, dragons and things like that. Okay. Um, and then he's there for 10 years, and he trains, and that's how he becomes the Iron Fist. And the Iron Fist, I can't remember the... That, that place has a specific name. Mm-hmm. Don't know what it's called. Um, but the Iron Fist is a protector of that realm. Mm. Like, that's his job. Like, he went in there, and he had these the special gift, and he became protector of that realm. And he's supposed to leave that realm. Ten years later, he comes back to New York, back to Rand Industries, and, like, yeah. and the best friend is still there. Mm-hmm. He's like, Danny Rand's like, yo, you killed my, my mom and dad. You killed my family. What's going on here? I want the business back. And you should thankfully, you should be thanking me that I'm not punching your head off right now. Right. Because I have the iron fist. And it's like a, I'm, I'll literally punch through things, as you saw in the trailer. I did. Um, so there's two things going on here. He wants to get his industry back. From his father, his father's business back, okay. but he also has to kind of fight with the people from uh, let's call it Shangri La for right now. Sure, from the mythical place Shangri La, because mm-hmm. he's technically supposed to be there. He's not native from there, 
But he is the Iron Fist. He is the protector of that's that That's his role. So yeah. there's got to be... Good, I guess there's going to be some conflict there yeah. between like what he wants to do on Earth and what he wants to do mm-hmm. on this other realm. So this is Marvel's... Almost Marvel's first step into like mysticism and magic. Yeah. Obviously... Uh, Doctor, Doctor Strange, Strange is coming yeah. out next month, November fourth. So it'll be very interesting. That'll be the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, people have, I think, have gotten early reports of saying Doctor Strange is very similar to how good the Winter Soldier was, Ooh. which is very good. Um, so we'll get some magic there, and then I think Iron Fist is going to come out, and we'll get more magic there. And eventually, I mean, in the very old times, Iron Fist was a hero for hire, very mm-hmm. much like Luke Cage, okay. where he just a bounty hunter, essentially like mm-hmm. a hero for hire. Give me money, I'll do your heroic things. Yeah. Um, so Luke Cage and Danny Rand are both like super tight friends. So we'll see how that happens in the Netflix because they haven't met each other yet. Right. And with how Luke Cage ends off, yeah, it's kind of hard for me to imagine them seeing each other. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. Um, I'm excited. I think it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be fun to if we have if we're gonna compare the four heroes that we've seen in Netflix mm-hmm. so far. I'm counting Iron Fist in that. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of different fighting styles between them all. Yeah. I think Iron Fist exciting. is more martial arts, more mm-hmm. jumping around doing things. Yeah. Whereas like Daredevil's like a brawler. Yeah. And he like gets knocked down a lot. Yeah. And it's more about endurance. I think Danny Rand and Iron Fist is just gonna be like he's gonna be on top one hundred percent of the time. Mm-hmm. Like he'll take down waves and waves of people and Daredevil does that too. And what do you want to? What would you call Luke Cage then? Because when you, I was thinking Luke Cage, I was thinking like brawler. He's like a but, bulldozer, but he's more like a know. street fighter, like. He's not very... He didn't do anything. I mean, he just has a lot of, like, regular fighting, like, punching and then throwing people... He does a lot of flailing. He's a flailer. Yeah. He, like, moves his arms back and forth, and that's it. So, like, Jessica Jones is equally as strong as Luke Cage, you could probably say. Okay. I would say. And her fight scenes, she runs through people, from what I remember, Mm -hmm. because she needs to. Luke Cage is just kind of, like, slow moving. Mm -hmm. He's like molasses in February. He's like, slaps people and they pass out. Yeah. So... So interesting. No, that, that'll be yeah. fun, though. I think this this character will be entertaining to watch fight scenes, because well, we haven't talked... Well, we're going to talk about Luke Cage today. Mm-hmm. But, uh, well, not in this episode. This is getting awkward. Uh, How confused can you make our listeners? I can make our... So we have a separate episode about Luke Cage. Go listen to it. Yeah, go listen to that one. There you go. Okay, moving forward. <laughs> okay, to play. be clear, which we are recording after this. Yeah. But it will be released at the same time. Yeah. So if you want to hear about Luke Cage, go to that video. Go check that episode out. That's why Justin is confused. Um, we have not recorded this video yet. Yeah, I didn't know. But what, we will. I didn't know how to reference it. Like, before. Or, okay, let's just move on. In our Luke Cage video. I'm in a hole. <laughs> I'm digging it. So, let's move on to the next news and just yes. cut your point. Let's just off. cut it off. I don't even... It's not even valid uh, There is an esports... <laughs> esports? <laughs> esports console player of the year. This is uh, being presented by Esports Industry Awards 2016. Okay. Um, and well, there's a lot of things. There uh, are esports quite a few. Journalist, photographer, game of the year, mm-hmm. uh, coverage website of the year, hardware provider, streaming platform, commercial partner of the year, things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what I wanted to see was I saw one of our Smash buddies. Yeah. I would like to call him a buddy. We don't know him well, personally. They, uh, is this one of the guys who's retweeted us? No. No, it's not. Uh, it was Hungerbox. Um, so he posted. He was nominated for Console Player of the Year, as well as some other people. And I want to talk about mm-hmm. those people. Um, so there is uh, Gorilla and Dragon from FIFA. There is Zero from Smash 4. Royal 2 from Halo. Uh, Mr. Crimson from Street Fighter. Crim 6 and Scump, both for Call of Duty. Both from Optic Gaming, so same team. Mm-hmm. Um, Ar- Armada from Melee, uh, Justin Wong from Street Fighter, uh, Hungrybox from Melee, and Mohamed Al Baka from FIFA. FIFA. Yep. So I never watched FIFA in my life. Halo, I've seen every once in a while. I don't mm-hmm. watch Street Fighter. Um, yeah. Because it's confusing to me, and I've never really played it. Melee, I'm very invested in, and Call of Duty, I'm invested in. Yeah. So there's two people from Call of Duty from my team, Optic, Net, Optic Gaming, mm-hmm. that I like. There's also two Smash players that I like, mm-hmm. our modern Hungry Box. If I had to vote... Well... Put my foot down. He is. <laughs> if I had to vote, I think I would vote for... I think I would vote for Hungry Box. Oh my I gosh. like Armada more, yeah. but Hungry Box has had an incredible year this year. Mm-hmm. He also won Evo mm-hmm. um, this year, and he's won a whole bunch of other things. He had like a whole list. He had like a list of five things he wanted to win, mm-hmm. and he won like four of them. And we'll talk about his. Uh, we'll talk actually more about him later on in the news segment because I have some more news about him. Uh-huh. But 
You're not very. You're not as invested in esports, these specific esports, as I am. Right, but I will say, out of this list, I know most about Armada and Hungry Bucks. Yeah, and I was gonna actually vote for Hungry Bucks too, so you kind of still went Thunder. Though I do like Armada a lot. I'll take your thunder. How come uh, you want to vote for Armada? Uh, just because uh, I follow both of them on Twitter, and Hungry Bucks is more entertaining. He is. <laughs> Hungry Bucks does the. Uh, he does like random voting stuff. He, no, that's like that got like national esport news. His uh, fast food. Playoffs, they were really funny. He where he, I voted uh, in almost all of them. So did I. Uh, where you he just has a list. It's a it's a tier list of Smash food. Uh, Smash <laughs> food. A tier list of fast food. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where he gets a whole bunch of lists and he puts that on Twitter and he has brackets on both sides and whoever votes, whoever gets the most votes, whichever restaurant gets the most votes mm-hmm. wins. Moves on. Yeah. And moved on the grand finals between, I believe Five Guys and Chipotle. Oh, and shoot. I understand Five Guys being there, but seriously. I don't understand why so many people like Chipotle. Have you never had an option before? Like, <laughs> Qdoba's all about options. That's what's up. Right? People say that Chipotle has better quality in things, and maybe it's a better quality of E. coli. I don't know. but And mistreating and not paying your workers. I guess. That thing I don't too. know anything about that. But, you but know, here's the thing. When was the last time you got guac for free and queso for free? You ever get well, that at Chipotle? An extra scoop of queso. Never. Extra scoop of guac. I'm all about all Qdoba. for free. So here's the deal. I think we can compare this... To and and just stay with me here. Apple versus Android. People like the safe route that's always going to be good, right? Like Apple, their operating system works really well every time, real smooth. Okay. You don't get a lot of options with it, but it but works. I see where you're going. But sometimes you like to go to Qdoba and get that fire queso, i.e., the Samsung Galaxy S7 that catches on fire. Now you're Calm on it. Down. There it is. I know what you mean. Not really what I was going for. That's hilarious, though. Okay. Great point. Uh, but Android, you have more options. Like, you have more customization. That's so, true. I was thinking, like, Qdoba is kind of like Android. Because it catches on fire. It's kind of like Qdoba. Qdoba puts fire in your mouth. Except for the last time I went to Qdoba, they didn't have any more fire queso. And I think they just, I think she said they discontinued it. They had that bacon jalapeno queso for a while. They did. That was good. I, was I, I have gone. good. So I've gone to Qdoba many more times than Chipotle. And mm-hmm. every time I go to Chipotle, I had a coupon for Chipotle. Yeah. Chipotle has better chips. I'll give them that. Okay. But every time I go to Chipotle, I'm just like, where's all my choices? What do they have? They have rice, two choices of rice, two choices of beans. They have the meat choices. Mm-hmm. So like three or four different meat choices. Mm-hmm. And then you have all the toppings. Mm-hmm. But not nearly as many as Cuba. Right. As uh, in my past careers, I have worked as a sandwich artist at mm-hmm. Subway. And Subway has an incredible amount of options you can put on your sandwiches. So I have grown up to believe that options are the way of the mm-hmm. future mm-hmm. when making burritos or sandwiches. Burrito, again, is the sandwich of the of the Latin Americas. Look, it, right? yes. yes. So in today's age, uh, we have a lack of choices. Look at our election. We have a lack of choices. We want choices. That's right. Qdoba. All the way. Give us choices. Go, no, there's go no us. choice. Go America. There's no choice. Qdoba. It is the only choice. See? With choices. That's right. All right, moving on. Um, I was going to say something. Totally forgot. <laughs> Unimportant. <laughs> that was complete tangent. We were just done for like All right. Minutes. So now I have the big news segments. Big I have one, news. two, three, four, five of them. Five of them, then we'll get to the title topic. All right? Yeah, Sure. So, mods are officially coming to PS4 for Skyrim and Fallout 4. So, forget what we said a couple weeks ago when we reported what yes they said. <laughs> uh, it appears Sony and Bethesda came to an agreement and mods will officially be coming to Skyrim Special Edition and Fallout 4 on PS4. Thank the Lord. However, there are still a few restrictions. Mod can only encapsulate assets and attributes that are native to said games. Popular mods like making all dragons in Skyrim skinned like Thomas the Tank Engine, or as I like to call him, Thomas the Dank Engine. Yes, we'll soon. Um, or adding a Darth Vader armor armor will still be restricted to PC and Xbox One. Aww. Mods will be coming to Skyrim before they will be released on Fallout 4. Skyrim Special Edition will also render at 4K to take advantage of the PS4 Pro. I'm disappointed. Are you really? There's a lot of assets in Skyrim and Fallout 4. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could still make complete I mean, true. story line arcs right. based on what's in there. And that's 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 good. That's all good and all, but you, you can't do, like, outside... I, I, I'm sure it has to do with, like, copyright and, like, all that stuff, but... Uh-huh. Probably. Man, I just know. I just want to have complete freedom. Ah, freedom! I just want freedom in it. Well, good thing you have a PC. I uh, know. Well, my PC's crap, so... I have a PC. I have had Skyrim, and I have not played it in months. Months? A month? A month? Yeah. I've been playing a lot of... I've been playing a lot of games recently. Really? 
Yeah, we'll talk about it later. Okay. Um, but this is good news. It is good news. Just in general. You can still have... Yeah. I mean, you can still have armored things. Mm-hmm. You can still be Jarl of a city. You can still be High King of Skyrim. Yeah. Right? These are all things that are native to the game. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you just can't have Thomas the Dank Engine or Darth Vader, Vader armor, yeah. things like that. But... No, it is good that they finally worked this out. I wonder how much of this is a result of the fallout of... Uh, huh? <laughs> the fallout for uh, for the fallout for the announcement previously <laughs> stated that they weren't going to have mods and Bethesda was like, well, blame Sony, and then Dude, Sony Bethesda was like, yeah, it's our fault. Threw them under the bus. Yeah, and, and I think I wonder I think how much this is that. That's necessary. <laughs> they should In have. In order to get things done. I mean, we want this. Consumers yes. want this. This is yeah. capitalism. Give us what we want. I find it interesting, however, that Skyrim mods are coming out before Fallout 4 mods. Mm-hmm. And that is weird to me. Skyrim Special Edition isn't... I mean, it's out in a week. Two weeks. Um, but Fallout 4 is already out, so I don't know mm-hmm. what they're waiting on that. I thought... Right. I thought they was already done. I thought it was supposed to be done, like, a month after the game came out. But there's a... Uh, there's in-game... Uh, there's an in-game program that you can go to to download mods and make mods and create mm-hmm. a system. So that's nice that it is also included. Yeah. So maybe that's the update they need to push. But at the same time, I thought it was already done. Yeah. Maybe they just scrapped it. Maybe they were like, F you, Sony, and they scrapped the whole thing for Fallout 4. It's possible. But I doubt it. I mean, they still want to make money at the end of the day. Yeah, they do. Speaking of making money, hackers from the 2014 PSN and Xbox Live outage have been arrested. Yes! So that's good. Uh, two hackers from the infamous hacking group Lizard Squad <laughs> were arrested recently, being charged with conspiring to cause damage to protected computers. Yep. Uh, being tied to the PSN and Xbox Live outage in 2014, maximum sentencing for the such offenses is 10 years in prison. Oh my gosh. Take that, Lizard Squad. You guys nice made me so mad. So, it was more than just two people, but these are the two people. I didn't write their names down because you don't need to know. But they had names. enough evidence. Yeah. Um, they're currently being prosecuted. Um, one guy is from Sweden, and one guy is from Maryland. Nice. Um, well, so it's nice that we're making progress. Yeah, good for authorities, because that stuff just drives me nuts when they do, like, denial of service and, like, bonkers. totally take down the entire, like, online capabilities of a console. And from what I could tell, it's just for trolling purposes. Like, there was yeah. no real reason to do that. They, like, they didn't have any, like, social change thing. or There's no purpose behind it other than to make yeah. people mad. That stuff makes me angry. You're like, why can't you do that to Donald successful. Trump's Twitter? Right. Like, why can't you do it to... Go- Maybe they did hack his Twitter. Maybe he's not actually tweeting those oh things. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Why, why aren't they doing stuff like Anonymous does, which is, like, taking down ISIS's Twitter feeds right. and, like, like, taking do something good. Like, do something for the good of mankind instead of just being a troll. Um, they were also tied to, like, a phone hacking system mm-hmm. where people would pay them, and then they would set up a, a, a system that would... You could you would pick a certain phone number. Mm-hmm. It would call that phone number. The, the one that they mentioned in the article was one hour mm-hmm. or once an hour for thirty days. So twenty four times a day for thirty days. And it would be like a thirty second voicemail. Yeah, and that just happened all the time. That's annoying. Yeah. So man, these people. So I'm glad they're arrested. Yeah, go give them the ten years. Go to prison. I doubt and stop happen. annoying people for no good reason. Yeah, freaking. At least have a good reason. Basement dwellers. Right? Yeah. Right? Got that gamer funk. Beyond Good and Evil, free for a month, sequel announced. Oh. Uh, long-awaited sequel of Beyond Good and Evil, a Ubisoft action-adventure game released in 2003, has officially been announced. After being denied production in 2008, Ubisoft's Michael Ansell has stated that the team has started pre-production and will be starting from scratch. Beyond Good and Evil is free to play on Uplay until the end of October. Okay. So you have a couple weeks. I actually downloaded it. I mm-hmm. didn't know what you... I didn't know I had a Uplay account. Turns out I do. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, if you they play probably Assassin's you. Creed, you have to have one. Yeah. Anyway, and I also realized they gave out free games once a month. Uh, uh, Uplay. You play those? Yeah. What? So I could I could show you what games they've had, but I don't care enough to show you right now. Okay. But uh, games I remember from the past. Splinter Cell. Um, That's, I love Splinter Cell. Prince of Persia. Ooh, those are good. Um, and then obviously Beyond Good and Evil. People have been... This has been low rumblings of this. I have no idea what this game is about. But people talk about how they want a sequel to this almost as equal as people want a Half-Life 3 sequel. Is what that's I hear. a big statement. Was, is what I hear. I don't know if that's true or not. But yeah. I downloaded it. I haven't started playing it yet. But we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. But I think the reason people wanted it so much was because um, it was actually being made in 2008 
but then they had they stopped like they didn't have funding for it I guess yeah so it was announced that it was being made and then it stopped and then they just never followed through yeah. which we've talked about that before we have projects this, being think, dropped and picked back up and then dropped and then yeah. picked back up and then released and we're crap that's true but this they said they're starting from scratch so that would be good yeah. as opposed to like the last guardian which is which is they just bump it from a constant yeah, yeah. from a console to a console so that's something new um do you have any thoughts on that uh, I not? don't. I don't have a lot of experience with Beyond Good and Evil. Uh, in terms play. of those th- those genres, it's really been Resident Evil for me that I've played. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I don't know if it's a horror shooting. It's a horror game. Beyond Good and Evil? I think so. No. Really? Yeah. It's not a horror game? No. What is it? It's an action adventure game. It's like cartoony. Seriously? Yeah. I think so. I'm so confused. Maybe it is a horror game. I have no idea. <laughs> well, we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> like I said, I haven't played it. I'm pretty sure it's not, though. I think it's just an action adventure game. Oh. Uh, next. Hungerbox yeah. quits his engineering job to pursue Melee full-time. That's what's uh, Hungerbox. I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, arguably the best player in the world currently, Team Liquid's Hungerbox has decided to pursue Melee full-time. Quitting his full-time engineering job, Hungerbox says he'll be playing Melee, streaming, and studying computer programming full-time. Despite a rough placing of fifth at Big House 6... Hungerbox has an incredible record to show for, including first place finish at Evo 2016. That's just one of the things this year. But Hungerbox was ranked two, second in the world at the beginning of this year, mm. um, right behind Armada. Mm. And then he went on like a tear and just won tournament after tournament after tournament. Yeah, yeah. I would rank him number one, despite the fact that he lost. Like he didn't do very good in Big House 6. Yeah. yeah. Uh, definitely one of our favorites, as we talked about earlier with yeah. Hungerbox versus Armada. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's fun. He's a good guy. And I to, think this is awesome. To go on to that, to go back to that topic a little bit, mm-hmm. I would vote for Hungrybox to be console player of the year because he's had an outstanding year this year yeah. compared to previous years. Um, mm-hmm. He plays Jigglypuff, which is not something you see at a high level. Right. And he's one of the... He's not one of the reasons why Jigglypuff is ranked so high on the tier list for Smash, but people mention him and his play when he does. However, he did get... Uh, he got 3 0 by SFAT pretty bad at Big House, at six. Big House 6. Yeah. Um, and people said that people people said that players will be referring back to that gameplay to figure out how to beat Hungry Box in the future. So we'll see what happens. But Hungry yeah. Box was like really down and out of this tournament because I watched all the top eight and most of the tournament. And he was like mm-hmm. like mentally out of it. Yeah. Which is hard to see, but that's fun. No, it'll be, it's interesting. But I, I do respect the decision to quit his full time job to pursue esports. <laughs> that's like that's a big risk you know it is a big risk and I think that also goes to show that he's also sponsored by Team Liquid yeah so it's not that big of a risk for him right he's also won a lot of tournaments including Evo which has a pretty big price pool I know but think about think about your resume yeah like engineering job mm-hmm. 2000 to 2016 yeah something like that uh, professional esports player 2016 to forever to whatever, and then you try to get back in engineering. They're like esports. Was this yeah. Thing? So I don't. It's just like because esports. Wow, we definitely believe that it is like a valid and career. Viable. It's it's going it's going places. It's definitely in a growth period. We've we've had time and time again on this podcast examples of esports growing. Uh, I still don't think the public, in in general, knows about it or respects it. So I, I think it does. Uh, it does feel risky to me for anybody to completely quit their full time job or like quit uh, something that's like a professional, uh, like went to college for it thing, to do to pursue esports. Yeah. I think that's a risk, and I, I respect him for taking it. And <clears throat> I think I think it'll pay off for him in the end. I uh, a little off topic on this, yeah. but for once in my life, I felt like an actual sports fan. Oh, yeah? Recently, talk to me. And that's because the uh, the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare beta came out, mm-hmm. and I don't plan on buying this game at all. So instead, uh, I'm watching people play the game. Mm-hmm. I'm watching athletes or players play the game yeah. that I have no interest in playing myself, yeah. but I root them on yeah. from sitting at home in my chair eating nachos. Nice. And that's the closest to a sports fan I have ever felt before in my life. Yeah. How often do you think people watch NFL then go play NFL the next day? Go play football. Never. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh, I just had an awesome idea. I've never once felt more like a sports fan than I did the other day when I was watching people play a game, which I will never play at that level. I wonder if there's ever there's like any esports bars. You know, like people go to B dubs to watch sports games. I wonder if there's ever gonna be a B dubs for esports or if B dubs will just have esports. E dubs. E dubs. E dubs. Um I mean TBS has shown 
uh, Overwatch tournaments, CSGO yeah. tournaments, obviously the league. Yeah, we've talked about that. Um, or the E-League or whatever it's called. Um, I don't know how often B-dubs will, B-dubs tune, will it. tune on to TBS itself. Yeah. Um, I know TBS also has uh, MLB games. Yeah. Um, so maybe. Um, but ESPN also streamed uh, League of Legends, Dota 2, things like that, mm-hmm. uh, Overwatch. So I think it's getting there. I mean, what what we'll dentist office... Uh, hotel would not be restaurant improved by does e-sports. not have ESPN <laughs> playing on some TV. That's true. So whenever e- whenever something's on ESPN, it's gonna be there. Yeah. So point. that's fun. Good point. Uh, one more thing of news. Yep. PewDiePie gets the Last Guardian early. Uh, there's gameplay of this, which we did not. You did not watch. I did watch. Um, I made some notes mm-hmm. about what I thought of this game. Again, the game has been in development since 2007. Uh, which, if you did not listen to our Game delay. Game delay episode. It was, a, it was. It's a bad omen. It was featured. It's a bad omen. So um, just saying that. More details on that episode. Go check so it. a few a few thoughts based on what I saw. Mm-hmm. Um, this was he played the same gameplay segment that they showed at E3 of 2015. Really? Which is really dumb. I think that's a really bad idea for them to give to somebody. Yeah. I don't know if he had a two episode part. I didn't see if there's a second episode. Mm-hmm. But when I was watching it, I'm like, it starts off. In a section that he hasn't played before, and mm-hmm. then it expands into what they showed at E3 2015. Mm-hmm. So that's a year ago, and I was watching it, and I'm like, this looks really familiar. Why do I know that this is? It's because they keep showing the same gameplay over and over again, and give it to people like PewDiePie to market it over and over again. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You have to show us something new, otherwise I have no confidence that you're actually making anything new. Yeah. Um, it was, I think it's been featured at E3 twice now? So it came out in 2007. It was either featured at E3 2007 or E3 2009. Um, so they, there's that dog, bird thing thing that's your pet. The Guardian. Or and I, yeah, the Guardian. I was watching it, and I was very frustrated for PewDiePie with the way that the pet was acting. Yeah. Because it acts very much like a pet. So what I mean by that is it doesn't listen and doesn't do exactly what you want it to do. Yeah. So it kind of has its own mind, a mind of its own. Yeah. does whatever it wants. It smells things. It goes over here, kind of is in its own head. Yeah. And at one point, like, that's a cool feature to have in a video game. Yeah. Like, this is actually a pet and it does whatever it wants. It's not tied to a specific thing. Mm-hmm. Seemingly. But at the same time, when you want the game to run the way it you want it to run when you want to have control yeah uh, I don't think this would be good but I do think that this would be good for a way to have character immersion with that guardian with that pet right and I think that, I mean this is the main mechanic of the game I mean this mm-hmm. is the thing that they've been touting for so long so yeah so uh, we'll see how it goes I mean I you I can watch the video obviously on PewDiePie's channel yeah um, and see what you think I uh, PewDiePie was very impressed with the animations of the main character which is very uh, the graphics so it's a very specific art style. Yeah, it's very stylistic. Um, they have, but I think at this point, the graphics yeah. should be better. And I understand it's an art style, but I don't think the art style is PS2 graphics. Mm-hmm. Right? So I think, and that's when most of their game. that's when their games came out was PS2 era. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shadow of the Colossus and Ico. Which, Shadow of the Colossus, one of my favorite games ever. Right, and I still feel like The Last Guardian for PS4 looks like how I remember Shadow of the Colossus looking. Yeah, it, it's similar art style. I haven't, really but not not so much art style, but I mean just like graphics, the like polygons resolution. and the resolution yeah, yeah. and the way things. There was one specific scene where uh, the main character was standing next to like a shoulder high platform mm-hmm. or like an armrest or something. Not an armrest, but like a a post. Okay. And the character like put his hand on the post and just like when he was standing there and PewDiePie was doing something else or whatever mm-hmm. and he saw that he's like oh it's so cool that the character puts his hand on the post like this like it's so cool that they paid that much attention to detail and I'm like mm-hmm. that is kind of cool but then I looked and his hand was like not on the post it was like, so you know how, like hovering above it it was like hovering a, like a foot off of it uh, like yeah. this is it was meant to be on the post right but it's not so if you want a good picture of things like Uncharted series does that really well. Mm-hmm. Um, has interactions with things like that. Uh, most games on the PS4 do that. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, which we'll be talking about later, mm-hmm. does things like that. Um, I assume Ratchet and Clank would even do something like that, right? So these Literally, are all yeah. AAA games, but they all have also been made in like three or four years, whereas this is made in like ten years. Right. You would think something groundbreaking would happen, which maybe the AI with the pet is groundbreaking, uh, but not. I don't think putting your hand on the 
side of a building or on the ledge of a yeah. plateau. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I suggest, I encourage people to watch the video. Make up your own mind. Yeah, think about it. Uh, if you still can, actually... I mean, check out our episode two talking about The Last Guardian and its delay. Because uh, I think it, it's... I think... It's a pretty good episode to listen to. I don't remember if it was PewDiePie or somebody else, but some I think it was PewDiePie. He said he pre-ordered this game back in 2007 or whatever when it was announced. Yeah. When he lived in Sweden, he doesn't live there anymore. Yeah. And the GameStop he pre-ordered it at has yeah. closed down since then. Oh, no. So, like, he that money. happened to so many people. I would assume so. Oh, no. But I, he also looks like he got it for free, so yeah. <laughs> what well, does he care? It's PewDiePie. He's making millions off YouTube, so... Multiple millions. Multiple millions. So, richest person on YouTube. Right? Most subscribers. Probably also the richest. Okay. So, on to the main topics. On to the title topics. Um, let's talk about... Uh, let's talk about games we've been playing recently. Okay.